Did you know that orchards are considered a biodiversity hotspot and they're extremely valuable for wildlife? Even though apple trees are actually not a native species. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through five ways you can enhance wildlife value in an orchard. We're here at St Ives Community Orchard, which is considered a traditional orchard because today, most of our orchards are grown for productivity and efficiency meaning apple trees or other fruit trees are planted in straight rows, really close together, and it's a tidy, clean landscape, which doesn't support wildlife. Whereas traditional orchards have been considered a biodiversity hotspot because they are a mosaic landscape of different habitats. Gnarly old fruit trees with crevices for insects and wildlife to thrive on, water bodies and wetlands, and hedgerows and native plants and trees, which this creates a mosaic of different habitats that support a variety of wildlife. Not so long ago, orchards covered thousands of acres across our landscapes, vast areas. And because they covered such large areas, these couldn't be tidy landscapes. They were wild. And that's what supported such a variety of wildlife. Whereas now, the tidy and efficient orchards we grow today may produce a lot of food, but they don't have those same biodiversity benefits of the orchards in our past. Here are five ways you can be an ecosystem engineer, an ecological gardener, supporting wildlife in an orchard. Dead wood is a really important habitat type and food source in an orchard because there are so many different bugs, grubs and insects that eat decaying wood. And this is really at the start of the food chain, at decomposition, which then that supports a whole web of life of birds, predators and other different creatures, which then creates a thriving ecology. So it's really important to have this habitat type and we can create it by simply leaving logs on the ground or creating really nice dead hedges like this. And the good thing about dead hedges is it can also impart quite an artistic feature on the landscape. And not only does it support insects, but a dead hedge like this is really good habitat for hedgehogs and other mammals to crawl into. The other way to support dead wood in an orchard is to leave dead standing wood or bits of decay in our old trees. Traditionally in orchards, we would remove as much dead and diseased growth, diseased growth as possible. But this is actually really valuable habitat up in the canopy because it provides food for beetles and grubs, which then supports a food source for birds up out the way of predation. Supporting wildflowers to grow in an orchard can really have so many different benefits. One of the most helpful things is supporting pollination, because if you have loads of wildflowers flowering throughout the year in your orchard, like this little campion here flowering in December, that supports a really healthy insect population and pollinators, which is then gonna pollinate your fruit and give you a better fruit harvest. Many of the wildflowers also have specific traits that support beneficial insects in the orchard. Like if we grow the umbilifer family, like wild carrot or Queen's Anne's lace, they have these umbrella-like flowers that have many small flowers within the whole cluster. And that's what hoverflies like. And hoverflies are really beneficial in an orchard because at their larval stage, they eat so many aphids aphids that can be a real problem on fruit trees. When we encourage wildflowers to grow around our fruit trees in our orchards, it also has the beneficial effect of reducing the vigorous grasses that we might have growing around the base of our trees. Like here, we've got these really vigorous grasses that were growing right close to the base of this tree. And these are grasses that aren't very sociable, meaning they're quite dominant and they actually take away from the nutrients and water of the tree, reducing its health. Whereas if we have a tapestry of different wildflowers growing around its base, 
they all have variety of root systems, some deep tap roots, some fibrous root systems, and each year at the end of the season, these plants die back above ground, which then all of those root systems are pruned, releasing nutrients into the soil food web, making those available for the tree. And as we've got this tapestry of plants above ground, all of those have different connections with microorganisms in the soil, really favouring a diverse ecology below ground and above ground. And it's this soil ecology that makes nutrients available for our trees to grow healthy and nutritional crops. To get wildflowers to grow in our orchards, we really need to create a disturbance in the vegetation so that the seedlings can get established because they won't want to grow in this really vigorous grass. So to do that, we can scrape back the vegetation, exposing at least 50% of the soil, and then seed our, our, our mix. Or we can look for disturbances in the landscape. Maybe a dog's dug a hole, or for example, these mole hills. That's created a disturbance, which then provides an opportunity for us to sow our seeds. So then we can just walk around with a seed mix, scatter it in any exposed bits of soil, so that over time, with just a little bit of intention, we can incorporate many different wildflowers into our landscapes. In the orchard, rather than just planting one layer of fruit trees, we should be looking to create multi-layered plantings with fruit trees, native canopy trees, shrubs, climbers, ramblers, and herbaceous perennials going through the orchard. Because this then creates structural diversity, which then provides habitat for wildlife and variety of different food sources. And we can also get a lot more production out of our orchard because we could be planting raspberries and letting them ramble through our orchard, gooseberry bushes, black currants, different nut trees and perennial vegetables. The idea of edible forest gardening has become really popular, but this idea of a multi-layered edible planting is more suited to the structure of an orchard, because in an orchard, you're encouraging light into the planting so that it can reach all of the branches, ripening the fruit. But then because you're trying to keep that open branch structure, Light can also reach the forest or the orchard floor, which means you can grow all of these other different edible shrubs, edible perennials, really creating that multi-layered planting, much like the edible forest garden. For wildlife benefit, we really want to be selecting trees with a larger, more vigorous rootstock rather than the dwarf rootstocks many of our trees are grafted onto today. Because those dwarf rootstocks only have a short lifespan, whereas the more vigorous rootstocks, the trees might grow and live for 100 years. And that means that they create all of these gnarly growths up in the canopy. They get decay and create holes, which then captures water and the water provides a drinking source for birds up in the canopy. And these old trees, as they grow and develop and become mature, they grow these gnarly barks that create an ecosystem in the canopy of the tree with lichens, moss, and the bark starts peeling away in places. And those crevices, they provide the perfect habitat for earwigs and earwigs are actually a really beneficial insect in the orchard, providing many different ecosystem services. And one is that their, their larval stage devour many different pest insects, particularly the aphids and the codling moth. It's really important to bring water into our orchards because without it, there isn't any water for insects and mammals to drink. It doesn't need to be complicated either. If you don't have that much space, you can create small water bodies like little ponds like this or bird baths. And even small water interventions can offer so much value for wildlife. 
So there we have it. Orchards are such biodiversity hotspots, but through a bit of intention from humans to garden and tend the land, we can create habitat piles for wildlife, support gnarly old trees for birds and insects, and really, as gardeners, become ecosystem engineers, tending the landscape for biodiversity and to produce food.